I think there are several priorities for Suffolk County Council that are very important. Education is a big part of it. We hold a very, very important responsibility in raising attainment, raising skills, making sure that young people are ready and equipped for the world of work and what's going to be very challenging. We also have huge budget uh, issues that we've got to deal with. It's going to be something like 120 million that we're going to have to deal with over the next three years. And we've got to face those budget challenges while protecting the most vulnerable in our community. We also want to see the highway service as well, something which uh, the county can be uh, very proud of. It is something which everybody uses and I think that um, we need to ensure that that has the adequate resources and um, that people can feel that they can drive around that county without there being too many potholes. I think it's an incredibly high and professional uh, priority which our staff give to the service that they give to uh, the people of Suffolk. In every opportunity that I've seen them and when I've been working with staff, they hold very dear the responsibilities that they hold and I think we see this in all aspects. So I think we're incredibly lucky with the service that is given by the staff that we have here. Very lucky with a very good calibre of people and I think that's something that the county should be very proud of. We see an awful lot of this through the Aspire programme as well and I think it's great that Aspire, which is very much some which our staff have introduced and have developed, um, I want to see this move forward so that the staff can really feel that they are uh, being a big part in the way that they can improve and take forward what we do for the people of Suffolk. There have been several highlights and um, I can, uh, I think some that I would um, particularly come down to would be uh, broadband. I'm not allowed to be interviewed without mentioning broadband. I think broadband is something that is a huge legacy issue for this county. Um, we are putting in an infrastructure uh, in a way that has never been done before, that's going to have a transforming effect on um, people's lives, on their work opportunities, educational opportunities and the way that they'll be able to access public services as well. And that's one that I would want to look back on as a great legacy issue. And what do you think Suffolk County Council will look like in the next 40 years? Well, very hard to say because it's changed an enormous amount in the last 40 years. And if you look back on uh, all the events and all the things that have happened in that time, but I have every confidence that uh, whatever we are, and uh, I hate to think if I'll be around in 40 years' time, what shape I'll be in, but who of us will be representing local government in Suffolk, that we will maintain the very high standards that uh, Suffolk County Council has already set in serving the people of Suffolk. I really enjoy working for Suffolk County Council because it's an organisation that's committed and focused on delivering good quality services for the people of Suffolk. We have frontline staff who really go the extra mile. We have strong political leadership and we have great and improving relationships with our partners looking at whole systems delivery. Um, and we have great collaboration with our neighbouring public sector organisations and partners. And, and isn't Suffolk a fantastic place anyway? I mean, who wouldn't want to work in Suffolk as a county? Um, but I'm, I'm really proud and um, really continuously um, excited and enthused about working for an organisation that's such a great one. We've, we've delivered over £80 million worth of savings over the last few years and um, I think you'd be hard pushed to find residents um, that, that really feel those cuts. So officers and members have worked really hard to minimise the impact on frontline. We've got more cuts coming, we've got more challenges coming. Um, but within that kind of context, we've, we've been able to deliver really creative and innovative solutions to some of the challenges around at the moment. So raising the bar is, is still a programme of change that I think will ultimately deliver um, much better achievement and attainment of our young people. We're working in a very different way in places. So in Lowestoft, we have the Lowestoft Rising project where we're working with the whole of the public sector, integrating the way in which we work at a local level. 
Um, we're also uh, working to transform all of our services through our transformation programs, which is looking at not just what we, what we do, but how we do it as well. Looking at ways in which we can minimise costs, manage demand, but still deliver good quality per, um, services for the people of, of Suffolk. So, uh, and, and actually the way in which we're commissioning our services is, is really new and exciting and effective. And, and I know we're doing well on this and achieving on this because we have others that want to come and learn from us because they see us as real pioneers in some of, some of this commissioning work, which is, which is really heartening and really a really good thing for us. So, so as a place, it's tough. And there will be more challenges ahead, but I think as an organisation, we're in a good place to meet those challenges and deliver. The, the words I'd use to, to describe Suffolk County Council and its staff are creative, innovative, supportive, um, focused on delivery, um, and, and, and just an acknowledgement that, that actually there are, there are very vulnerable people in our communities that, that need supporting. But also challenging as well, you know, challenging of our partners, of, of some of our communities and residents, um, and just this willingness to be different and to change and to constantly be ahead of the game. I think over the 40 years it's been less intimidating. Um, the building itself is much more open. But also is quite interesting is the fact that in the past Suffolk was part and parcel very much of the law making and law enforcing organisations. When I first became a county council, the headquarters of Suffolk and Sapri were actually in the county hall complex. We also prosecuted uh, through the county prosecution service on behalf of the police. We also ran the probation service. And so with that as a background around, you can appreciate that that sort of slightly intimidating uh, atmosphere permeated there. And that's now changed. The police have now become standalone. Probation service is going to be partly denationalized, I think. Uh, and the Crown Prosecution Service now takes over what the County Council used to do. So those services have gone. Uh, other services have taken their place. I suppose the more interesting ones has been the issue about the uh, care of the elderly. It's now much more significant as far as the County Council is concerned than it was almost 40 years ago. Well, there have been so many. It's been a huge privilege and also a pleasure to be chairman of Suffolk County Council. I look back at some really eminent people who've fulfilled this particular role with great distinction. I hope that I've managed to live up to that. Well, the question of highlights, I suppose, in a way for me, something like listening to the sermon by the former Archbishop of Canterbury at Stratford St. Andrew when he came to preach, um, the, the excitement of, of the hundred years of the uh, diocese, again, at the, at the cathedral. Looking at Magna Carta uh, was wonderful. Uh, taking part in the uh, celebrations or the homecoming of the soldiers and RAF regiment, uh, taking part in that. That's, those are highlights. And meeting people, really interesting people, just so many interesting highlights. It really is a, a constant up and up and up and there we go. So it's been really, really good and really interesting and really quite exciting and really quite humbling as well. Well, I've been mean, really privileged and really fortunate. I've had the opportunity uh, some years ago to be chairman of the Highways Committee, and then for over eight years, the Portfolio Hilda for Transport and Archaeology, and all sorts of interesting, wonderful things. And I suppose, in many ways, seeing how we've managed to move Suffolk on, we've managed to get things done uh, in terms of infrastructure improvements, a uh, whole range of things which we took to part in uh, through my offices. I think what it also is really, really interesting is that I'm absolutely convinced that if you've got a, a purpose and a vision and you share that with your officers and they're with you on that, there's no limit to really what you cannot do for the people of Suffolk. Interesting particular, I suppose, is now be, certainly sure to be opened will be the, uh, uh, the, uh, the, road, the new trunk road, the A11, which is going to be opened uh, between Thetford and uh, Mildenhall. And that, many, many ways, had got lost uh, in the bureaucracy of, of central government, and no one really was claiming ownership of it. And I was chairman of the regional transport group for a couple of years, and, and during that time, we made that particular road the top priority. And so that, 
then happened as a consequence of that. Uh, we made the top priority for the whole of the region. So that happened as a consequence of our efforts. I suppose long term, looking at other things, very keen on public transport, I'm particularly pleased that Suffolk County Council was a catalyst for ensuring we've now got an hourly service on the railway line between Lowestoft and Ipswich. Again, something which, supported by my officers, we managed to do. If Suffolk hadn't been in there, it would not have happened. Um, it could have been stopped by the people, but Suffolk made it happen. And then you see other improvements, the roads in Lowestoft, for example, the South Lowestoft Relief Road, uh, again, taking traffic away from the, the seafront, again, making it a much more attractive place, and uh, other things as well. And also getting involved with the archaeological service, again, a fascinating thing, and really sort of changing that, I hope improving that for the future. So there have been a huge number of highlights, and I, I think that I think it's not correct to say an individual can't make a difference. An individual can make a difference, provide individual works with other people to get things done. And that's a great lesson in many ways of learning government. That is a very difficult question to answer. Um, I hope what does happen, in fact, there is some form of stability in terms of lower government. That this constant change or threats of change is very unsettling. Um, in terms of, but I do feel the present structure we've got is not stable. I think that there is a problem faced with the structure of local government. Uh, increasing costs are bearing down upon that, and the idea of having this layer of, of local government in an area such as Suffolk will be difficult to justify. Now, what direction we go in in terms of resolving that, difficult to say. But I'm very much a one Suffolk person, and I do believe that uh, you know, we are best when we work together. And the concept of, of, of Suffolk being the local authority for this part of England, I think, has very powerful uh, resonances, quite, quite honestly. I think we could do well by the people of Suffolk if there was one authority. We could delegate in terms of areas and responsibilities, but fundamentally we need to sort of be big enough and bold enough and able enough to employ high-quality people to deliver quality services for the people of Suffolk. And that, I hope, will happen over the next 40 years. It's going to be a tough call. Uh, but uh, you know the people of Suffolk are up for the task, and if we have the quality of offices in the future, as the ones I worked with in the past, I've got no fears for the future.